Hi, I'm Tom with the list of interesting things. It is currently two weeks, 14 days to the 2020 presidential election. Today we're going to go over another 2020 election predictions. We're once again going to do it state by state. This will, like the last couple, be a little more freeform with lots of uhs and ums. As always, I encourage everyone to dive into the comments and argue with me. Let's dive right in. I don't think that anyone is going to argue with me too strongly as I start to characterize some of these states. We're going to go ahead and hit Washington, Oregon, and California for the safe Democrat. We're going to hit New Mexico, Illinois, because Chicago is pretty big, New York, and indeed most of the Northeast. We're going to skip over New Hampshire for right now. Then we're going to move right on to the safe Republican states. For anyone who is unfamiliar with how this rating scale works, it is... Safe defined as 15% or greater margin for, uh, for a given candidate. Le uh, likely is defined as um, 5 to 15% for a given candidate. And lean is, is 1 to 5. Tilt is usually defined as 0 to 1. I'm playing a little loosey-goosey with these numbers. Uh, so you might see something that might be strictly defined as likely in the lean or something that might be strictly defined in the tilt in the lean. I wouldn't worry about it too much. The, the numbers get really close. Uh, and the polls are a little bit unclear. So uh, the, just take this as a measure of what candidate I think is most likely to win the state. Don't worry about the numbers too, too much. We're also going to fill in Maine and Nebraska right away. Maine and Nebraska are the only two states in the nation which assign electoral values proportionally. Uh, for example, Maine gives two electoral college votes to the candidate uh, with the most statewide and one electoral college vote each to the candidate with the most in each congressional district. All right, moving right along. Well, we're just going to characterize those themselves right now just to simplify things just a hair. We're going to move on to the likely Democratic states. And I believe in our last characterization, there was only one. It was just Colorado. But today we're going to expand that to include Virginia and New Hampshire. And for, before anyone starts complaining at me, we're going to go ahead and take a look at both of those states now. As you can see, uh, Biden is very strongly ahead in Virginia. I said some people might get uppity with me in the last prediction video at my characterizing it as likely, I'm sorry, as lean instead of likely, but I'm going to go ahead and switch that over now, and I think there might even be some people who get a little uppity with me for not calling it safe, though I think those people are a little crazy. We're going to go ahead and take a look at New Hampshire, too. This is the 538, um, this is the 538 forecasting model. As you can see, Biden is consistently ahead, very consistently ahead. The vote share is looking to be 55-44. I think it's fairly safe to call New Hampshire likely in favor of the Democrats. I think those are our only likely Democratic switches. We're going to move on to the likely Republican states. We're going to go ahead and hit Utah and Indiana right off the bat. And we're also going to click on South Carolina and Alaska. Now, South Carolina and Alaska, we're going to, oh, I forgot Hawaii. We're going to take a look at South Carolina and Alaska here in a minute. They are going to stay as likely Republican states. However, they are not all that far away from being taken down to lean Republican states. They are pretty competitive. Uh, one in 10 odds for Joe Biden to win the election. And Trump up by a good margin, but nowhere near what you would expect in South Carolina. Similarly with Alaska, even closer here, a 22 in 100 chance for Joe Biden to win the election and fairly narrow margins. I'm going to leave them as likely for this prediction, but I wouldn't be surprised to see those narrow up even further in the near future, so I got to pull them down to likely. 
Now we're going to move on to the spicy states. And as you can see, there's a ton of states left on the board. I love this kind of exciting map. There are so many states where things are really tight right now. We're going to go ahead and click on Nevada, Arizona, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania for the Democratic Party. And here's the crazy thing. We're going to go ahead and take a look at Texas. Just like I said in the last one, Texas is really, really tight. And if you had told me 10 years ago that Texas was going to be a tight state in favor of the Republican candidate, I would have called you crazy. But here we are. I think I am forced to say that none of the states currently on the board are lean Republican. I think it's really safe to say that Texas is still tilt Republican, but it is no longer going to the going to the Republican Party by a comfortable margin. Look at these uh, look at these polls. Biden plus one, Trump plus two, Biden plus one, Trump plus seven. That's a pretty good one for the president. But even Biden two, Trump four, Trump five. I think it's still going to go to the president, but look at this margin. The projected vote share is 50.5 to 48.5, and there has been an enormous groundswell of support in favor of the Democratic Party all over Texas. Individuals like Beto O'Rourke making huge strides toward voter registration, making huge numbers of phone calls all over the state of Texas. I think that this state is very much in play. I do still think it's going to go to the Republican Party, but I think that it is very much in play. Moving right along, I think that we can go ahead, well, we're just so that we don't skip over them too much, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rust Belt states. We'll take a look at Michigan first, all the way up here. As you can see, this is pretty much in the Democratic column. It's getting to the point where you can start to call it likely. We'll take a look at Wisconsin, which is pretty much the same. Uh, Biden 5, Biden 10, Biden 7, Biden 1 from the Trafalgar Group, which, which is traditionally a Republican-leaning pollster. Uh, Biden 7, Biden 8, and Biden 2. We'll take a look at Pennsylvania, and you'll see something similar. Biden consistently up in Pennsylvania. This is really quite something, because with the Rust Belt states under lock and key, the, 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 the Biden campaign's uh, path to victory is really hard to overcome for the Trump campaign. These three states, I think we might in the future consider making those likely Democrat. Um, similarly, Minnesota has been really safely in the Democratic column for a long time. For the next one, and, and I'm going to hold off for now, but for the next prediction, I think we might be considering putting these into the likely Democratic column. For right now, though, I think that we're going to leave the likely Dems like this. Why don't we take a look at North Carolina now? North Carolina is once again likely for the Democrats. Uh, it's And this is something that really baffles me. Look at these odds. Look at this projected spread. I want, to, I want you to remember this as I flip back to Texas. Exactly the same odds for Texas and North Carolina in reverse. That means that Joe Biden is as likely to win Texas as uh, Donald Trump is to win North Carolina. That is such a terrible thing for the president. We're going to characterize that as tilt, but it has been moving in the Democratic direction. I think we might see that go likely as the polls start to really flood in in the next week or so. I think we're going to flip over to Iowa now. Iowa has been reasonably consistently on the Trump side, but not by, by heavy margins. And as you can see, there's a lot of sporadic 
uh, uh, sporadic polling numbers here. If we take a look at the vote share, it's extraordinarily tight. We're going to call this tilt for the, uh, for the Republicans, but not by much. It is much closer than Texas and much closer than North Carolina. We're going to call it tilt, but only by a hair. We're going to flip to Florida now, which I think is a little bit more decisive. Uh, Florida with a 70% chance for Joe Biden. And again, I want to compare this to Texas. A 33 in 100 for Trump in Texas. This means that that um, uh, Texas is about as safe for the Republicans as Florida is for the Democrats. That is insane. Taking a look at the polls. Biden has been pretty consistently ahead, not by an incredible amount, but pretty consistently ahead. We're going to go ahead and give that tilt for the Democratic Party. Now we got two states left, and these two states are the only two on this map that I have real trouble characterizing. Georgia and Ohio. Georgia is a dead heat. It is flat 50-50. And look at these polls. These are, again, way all over the board. Biden has been, has been consistently performing on par with Donald Trump here. And it's, it's insane. Having, he had a 51, he was ahead in, um, in Georgia for just like, like a day and a half. It is currently 49.6 to 49.6 projected vote share, according to 538. This is insane that Georgia is this tight. For the moment, we are still going to give it tilt in favor of the Republican Party. For the moment. because Just because I think that there has been such trouble in their early vote, and because I think that they're that their traditional demographics will come out on election day. I think that it's still going to go for the Republican Party. But we might see in the next week the polls start coming out. People saying, you know, uh, uh, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million people saying, uh, yeah, I went and voted and I voted for Joe Biden. If they start saying that, we might start seeing this tilt to the true toss-up column. But I don't know that we can just now. Finally, Ohio. Ohio is very similar to Georgia, but I don't know that it's reasonable to characterize it as a Trump state just yet. As you can see, it's not like Georgia where it started narrowing up at the end. It has been narrow the entire race. Look at how close this is. Just the same as Georgia, but with switching leads all throughout the year. I think that it is reasonably safe to say that this one is the only one on the on the map that we might be consider we might be able to consider a true toss up. I mean, look, Donald Trump is favored, but look at the projected vote share. It actually goes in favor of the Democratic Party. This is kind of crazy. I think that this one we have to leave as a true toss up. Now, as you can see, the the map is more or less the same as what it was last time. Watch if we go ahead and characterize Ohio in favor of the Republicans. It's 335 to 203 in favor of the Democratic Party. But we've taken away uh, Ohio from the Republicans, and we have moved Texas into the tilt column. So they have even fewer safe states than they did. And if you want to get technical about it, I don't really want to get technical about it, but you could see people saying Montana, Kansas, and Missouri are likely states instead of safe states. I'm not inclined to go that far, but we have been seeing people say that. I could see, I could see Joe Biden taking Ohio. This is not unreasonable. You saw what the odds were up here. I could see him taking Ohio. 
I could also see him taking Georgia. I think it's a little bit less likely because of the traditional demographics we've had in Georgia, but I could absolutely see it if we get, and, and it's not even like a strong blue wave year that would flip Georgia and Ohio this time. It is like a gentle blue current that would flip Georgia this time. If that happens, then we have a 369 margin and Texas has been getting tighter and tighter all year. I could see it starting to teeter. It's it's insane how close these races are this year. I have a lot of trouble seeing at this point a path for Donald Trump to victory because it's so close in these traditionally Republican states. If you are curious about what their paths to victory are, we put up a Donald Trump and Joe Biden pair of videos for their respective paths to, vid to victory, and I encourage you to take a look at that. I also encourage you to subscribe to stay up to date on all the most interesting things. You'll note in the next couple of days, we're going to be putting up a couple more videos on early vote, what the turnout has been looking like, and a couple of other things like that. I encourage you to subscribe to see those, and until next time, I hope that you will be just like the 2020 presidential election, which is to say, increasingly and continually interesting. Have a great day. See you next time.